RuneScape's market, as you know, is constantly changing. Items are always being added, removed, value rises, value falls, and so on. Most of the time, this is natural and unavoidable when it comes to RuneScape. Except for those rare cases where someone has found a way to manipulate the market in a way the developers never intended. Most of the time, that manipulation is done through glitches. Today I'm going to talk about 5 glitches that had a major impact on RuneScape's market, whether that was the Grand Exchange market or whatever markets players used before the GE existed. Now, these may not be the 5 worst glitches to ever affect the market, as that's something almost impossible to measure, but they all had a pretty big effect. Lastly, I don't condone or support glitching in any way, shape, or form, and this video is just a fun way to look back and see what RuneScape was like when these happened. None of these glitches work anymore and haven't worked for a really long time. Anyway, let's get into the video. Number 5, PvP Drop Potential Glitch. This one is a pretty unique one, and is the only one on this list that didn't affect a specific item or set of items, but still managed to have a major effect on the game's economy. The glitch was first discovered on April 11th, 2009, and was patched in less than 72 hours later on April 13th. It basically tricked the game into thinking you were risking way more than you actually were in free-to-play PvP worlds. The way it worked was that you place a lot of high-value items in your familiar in a member's world, and then hop over to a free-to-play world. You wouldn't have your familiar in the free-to-play world, but the game still considered the items in your familiar as part of your inventory. So, if you ran into the wilderness and died, you would keep the items in your familiar, but the game thought you actually died with those items. Back then, there was something called the Drop Potential System. Basically, it was Jagex's way of making sure players got fair drops from PKing, while also trying to prevent real-world trading. This was back when the wilderness was safe, except for on PvP worlds, of course, and there was a trade limit. Anyway, if you ran into the wilderness and died, tricked the game into thinking you lost items of high value, and repeated, then this system would think, well, since this player has lost a lot of items lately, we should give them more valuable drops to make up for this. So, once you died enough times, you'd hop back to a member's world, go PKing, and immediately start getting very valuable drops. Supposedly, it was possible to make almost 50 million a day using this method, but previously I mentioned the glitch was discovered and patched within 72 hours. So, how could this have such a huge effect on the market? Well, the day it was discovered is the day the public discovered it. Nobody truly knows when this glitch started. Andrew Gower himself said that the bug was in the game a while before it was discovered. This means small groups of bug abusers could have been using this glitch for months before the public discovered it. Supposedly, most people involved with this glitch were not banned either, so that means billions, maybe even trillions of extra GP began floating around in-game, causing even more inflation to occur. Number 4, The Barbarian Assault Blood Rune Smuggle Barbarian Assault is a minigame that seems to have a past that is plagued with bugs. Although most of the time you'll never notice them, of course, unless you're trying to break the game on purpose. Anyway, this glitch I'm about to talk about happened literally hours after Barbarian Assault came out. The simple explanation is you were able to smuggle out literally any item in the minigame except for the cape. At the time, Blood Runes were the most expensive item you could obtain from the minigame, so you're probably guessing by the title of this glitch where this is going. The group who discovered this glitch decided they'd use this newfound exploit to their advantage. What they would do is log into six different accounts and smuggle the runes all at the same time. They were able to do this for weeks and weeks before the glitch was found by Jagex. This means they dumped possibly millions of blood runes into the game in an extremely short span of time. The GE didn't exist yet, so I'm unsure of what effect this had on the price, but I don't doubt that it was pretty major. So, now that you know what the glitch is and the effect, you're probably wondering how did it work? It's actually pretty simple to be honest. Basically, there was another glitch at the time where you could trick the game into thinking you were in a duel even after leaving the arena. What the smuggler did was start a duel, leave the arena, and go play Barbarian Assault. When the smuggler had enough runes, they just had their friend exit the duel causing them to both teleport back outside of the duel arena. There were later other ways to do this glitch, as it has popped up a few times in RuneScape's history, and with multiple items. To be honest, I won't be surprised if this isn't the last time we'll see this glitch. Number 3, Amulet of Glory Dupe. This was a pretty major glitch done by the same group as the Blood Runes glitch, and this glitch was originally discovered on June 4th, 2006, which was just a few days after the release of Player Owned Houses. They somehow managed to figure out how to exit a house in building mode and enter another player's house with this mode still on. Rather than being able to edit the other player's house, they were able to take things without them actually disappearing. This means they were able to take the glory amulet off the wall because they were in building mode, 
but it wouldn't actually be removed from the house because they didn't own it. The player would continue to do this until their inventory was full. Also, as a side note, this also worked on other things in the house, such as Castle Wars decorative armor. Anyway, back to the main point. The group continued to abuse this glitch and sell the amulets in an attempt to make massive profit. As a result of how many they were duplicating, prices dipped from 100k all the way down to 50k in just a few weeks. Assuming this article is correct, since this was before the GE, the price of these never recovered after this. The bug was eventually patched, but it was three weeks after it was discovered, and it obviously had an effect that was impossible to reverse. Number 2. Bolt Duplication This glitch is really interesting, as it's the first one on this list that we're able to see actual exact data on the damage it caused. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a minute. So, this glitch was first leaked to the public on February 22nd, 2010. Basically, the glitch allowed you to duplicate any type of bolts, although it was mainly used for dragonstone bolts due to them being the most expensive. As I explain how it works, I'll recreate it in-game, although obviously it won't work as it's just to help for those of you that like to see things visually. The glitch has not worked in a very long time. Basically, how it worked is when a player attempted to cut a gem into bolt tips, they would open their magic book and have the enchant spell ready. As soon as they started making bolts, they would attempt to enchant them. The first 10 bolts would get enchanted normally, but every bolt after the first 10 would turn into 12 enchanted bolts. Once this method got leaked to the public, it was kind of insane. Over the course of just a few days, the price of these bolts dropped an extremely considerable amount, as seen on the screen now. It also took a little over 6 months for these prices to recover to what they were before they crashed. Number 1. Party Hat Duplication this one I imagine quite a few of you were expecting. This is an extremely well-known glitch from way back in the day. It was discovered all the way back on November 7th in 2003. Basically, a player known as Six Feet Under was attempting to figure out how to trade a scythe using a third-party program. He was never able to figure out how to trade the scythe, but instead figured out how to duplicate any item in the game so long as it was unstackable. Basically, he was able to change the item ID of any item in a trade window, so he was able to make items out of literally nothing. Six revealed this to a few other players, and a chain reaction started where more and more players figured out how to do this glitch. As a result, players decided to duplicate at the time what was the rarest party hat in the game, the pink party hat, which was later changed to the purple party hat in RuneScape 2. Anyway, because of this glitch, the purple party hat is known as the cheapest party hat in the game when it used to be the rarest. This really goes to show how much of a major effect glitches like this can have on the game. Jagex realized how serious this was and needed to fix it fast. Several days passed, and Jagax offered lifetime membership to the first person who could reveal how to do it. Some people say the first player did get this reward, but others say they were permanently banned as soon as they revealed it. So, nobody really knows. <laughs> Either way, this glitch that happened almost a decade and a half ago still has major effects on the game today. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and let me know what type of videos you'd like to see in the future. Before I close this off, one last time, I'd just like to say in no way do I condone glitching, this is just a fun video to explore the past of RuneScape. Other than that, drop a like, and if you have the time, watch another one of my videos. See you next time.